solving this so let me start uh, uh, this discussion so first thing first uh, whatever i am going to discuss today it is based on uh, whatever experience i have and uh, as has been shared with you that i have been associated with some journals uh, i have published some papers in these journals and these are a grade journals uh, uh, categorized as in abdc list and uk abs level 3 journals uh, i have been reviewer to many journals uh, so i keep on getting these review assignments i am also uh, kind of you know sharing uh, i am willing to share those experiences this is what uh, you know i intend to do in this discussion today uh, so first thing first let me put a disclaimer uh, generally in these workshops and conferences we call the speaker as to be an expert uh let me put it as a disclaimer that i am not an expert i will only share with you whatever i have experienced and maybe in the audience uh, someone of you have uh, uh their experiences to share so we will have that q and a session in the end of the discussion maybe and then we can have those discussions also so robert altman the famous hollywood director uh, the man and uh, the, the man who is called as the most influential uh, american director man behind the movies like mash nashville three women uh, the players he 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 was also of the opinion that he was not an expert but people uh, were like liking his work so uh, it is not about being ex- being an expert it is about being into discussion mode where we can learn from each other and this is the idea so uh, with this uh, uh, let us uh, kind of start it uh, what's in plan today uh, i will uh, try to cover these things uh so uh, this is like a uh, general system you can see my pointer uh, because the, because the discussion point is how to publish in premier journals uh, so first of all we must know what are premier journals and how do we call a journal as a premier journal this is a very important point because i am also guiding some phd students and when i ask them uh, that okay just go after good journals so first question uh, and which is a very obvious question also that would come is that uh, what is a premier journal how do we identify that which journal is a premier journal uh, uh, so we have tons of journals today uh, this is also a mammoth task so uh, first of all i will write, i would like to touch upon this aspect that how and when should you call a journal as a premier journal so this is the point number 1 that is what we are going to touch upon second is article categorization uh, article categorization i would like to discuss with you how many type of articles do we see in journals uh, as far as we as authors are concerned we are academic authors we are more into fundamental research uh, we are less into action research so from someone who is doing fundamental research what kind of articles do you usually see being published in these journals so this is what we will try to touch upon uh, uh, following uh, general system understanding and then uh, we will talk of uh, research article writing uh, Uh, what to take care of uh, so that you can expect that this work of yours is a uh, is a is a important work and should make it to a journal but it is just that that we do some very uh, small mistakes which are always rectifiable and if you can take care of those things then definitely uh, you know we have uh, a better chance of standing before those tall journals so that is what we will uh, follow up and then we have uh, my personal experience uh, this is what i will share as a reviewer i will share some review sheets also with you and i will try to discuss with you that where uh, you know uh, the kind of uh, problems arises uh, when uh, we are trying to submit to any journal so uh, let us try to look at where are we coming from uh, the journal system it's not a new system i mean if you would ask someone uh, and if you would look back into the history where we are coming from uh it was in 19 uh, it was in 1665 that a journal uh, named as desquants uh, this was a french journal they have first uh, started uh, publishing a journal uh, publishing some researches uh, earlier they used to publish obituaries uh, that was in 1665 and then they have kind of you know regularized it they have done some research around it and they have started systematically publishing research results so officially when we go back uh, we find it coming from uh, somewhere around 1616 1665 uh, at least the record says so then uh, there are some milestones which has happened uh, across the timeline and these line uh, these milestones are like uh, starting in 1665 we see 
uh, that first peer reviewed journal uh, was launched by royal society of edinburgh in 1731 uh, you might be using and hearing this word uh, too often a uh, peer reviewed journal uh, so it started in uh, 1731 and the first uh, peer reviewed journal was uh, medical essays and observations uh, coming from royal society of edinburgh so this was a major milestone because Uh, the entire uh, system of publishing today uh, rests on to uh, the quality of this reviewing and the reviewers uh, establishes and maintains the quality of those journals and i will uh, spend some time on to the uh, peer reviewing uh, aspect of the journals also number one journal uh, uh, nature uh, currently being published by a stranger uh, uh, started publishing in 1869 so that is also seen as a very important milestone uh, into the into the evolution of journal system and then uh, one more thing which has been creating havoc for us as academicians and there has been a lot of debate around this uh, the word impact factor uh, the impact factor was started in 1975 so uh, this is like you know uh, an important milestone so today uh, if you would go back uh, and look at our api system also they also kind of you know categorize the marks that an academician would get and as a researcher or scholar would get they invariably depend upon how much impact factor uh, uh, the journal has in which you have published so that that thing has started in 1975 and then in 1991 uh, today we are dis- uh, sitting in digital uh, times so who would have expected uh, that not only indira gandhi university but the other universities also uh, would be having the virtual conferences and virtual workshops in place so that has all started way back in 1990s when the online repository of uh, electronic reprints or preprints of journals were started uh, uh, were started making sense by american physicist paul so these are some milestones you know this is where we are coming from it has a long journey we have passed and lot of water has flown since then if you would look at today where we have arrived uh, if you would see i have here highlighted some very uh, prominent publishers uh springer is a very prominent publisher i have told you that nature comes from the house of springer uh today they are publishing more than 3000 journals can you can you imagine more than 3000 journals something which started in 1665 we have reached uh, to this point elsewhere uh, they are publishing 2960 journals uh, another very important and good publisher sage uh, they are today publishing 1600 plus journals John Wilson 1600 plus journals Taylor and Francis 2700 journals so obviously this is not an exhaustive list if you would go uh, and try to find out the, the 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 publishers the respected and reputed publishers you would invariably realize that there are many more now for example i have not inserted here emerald which is a very respected publisher also and indra science which is also not here but i i am not even counting everything uh, i am just trying to give you a snapshot and umbrella view of how we have traveled and where we are sitting today and that is that is why it is a problem to me as a researcher when i look at the springer is offering 3000 journals how not do i select which one to go for when john williams sons is publishing 1600 plus journals how on earth do i decide that where do i publish uh, out of these journals which one is made for me not everything is made for everyone uh, something is made for someone and which is that something that is something that we actually need to look at right so uh, then uh, let us look at how do we select out of uh, these uh, uh, out of these big publishers uh, out of these many many journals how do we select uh, which one is a peer journal the basic question that we have started our discussion with uh, the first thing is uh, you have to look at the publisher publisher uh, is very important to look at if you do not uh, uh, if you would go back now let us talk of our scenario uh, if you would uh, look at we have very very uh, small publishers small journals coming from the very small streets of our country i was uh, hearing in the news and you must also be hearing that someone sitting in cathal in a very small street is also coming up with this journal is asking for money to publish and he will ensure you that your article gets published in a day or two uh, i mean what is the authentic of that do you call it a peer journal obviously not so i am telling you the five step things which you can look at uh, when uh, you are trying to establish that what do i call as a peer journal and which one is a peer journal so first thing is look at the publisher who is the publisher of this so i have shared with you uh, elsewhere uh, sage uh, john williamson's general francis springer 
emerald indra science harvard publishing oxford publishing so these are some of the examples the first thing that we have to look at because these publishers at least has some criteria some uh, uh, basic benchmark that they adhere to and without uh, having a journal qualified by the, these criteria uh, you will not have uh, you know uh, the journals being published by these publishers number one criteria number two that look at where it is listed because we are living in digital world and in this digital uh, world uh, there are a lot of uh, ways by which we can actually identify that which one is a good journal now, for example uh, in my field where do i come from you have databases uh, like scopus ssci ssci is a social science citation index web of science these are database uh, they have their own criteria of inclusion of journals uh, they would not include any tom dick and harry journal you know so uh, if you would look at the terminology uh, scopus uh, is the um, is having the least uh, uh, is having the least criteria in the sense of uh, kind of you know robustness and now what do i mean by that is you can find lot of journals in scopus out of them very few uh, few journals are in ssci and web of science is uh, is, a, is a database where you still have the lesser number of journals in comparison to scopus just to give you a sense that ssci only list those journals which has impact factor so uh, it uh, doesn't include the journals which does not has impact factor so look at the journal first look at the publisher then you look at the database right and if it is listed into a database then uh, you actually should actually be looking at it as to be qualifying the point number 2 in identifying a journal as to be prestigious journal point number 3 impact factor does journal has impact factor which is very important uh, just to give you a very quick snapshot of what is uh, impact factor impact factor are the average number of citations that each paper published in a journal has got over the last 2 years so that means you are being cited that is being you are being relied upon right this is the concept of impact factor now ssci only list those journals which has impact factor right so you will not find any journal which does not has impact factor uh, which is listed into ssci so look at look at uh, the if you are going for scopus look at whether it has an impact factor or not so what i'm trying, trying to tell you is i'm leveling up i'm starting from uh, the least and then i'm going to step by step so as you increase the number of steps your uh, Uh, chance of uh, getting publishing is becoming more toilful so you need to do a lot of toil to get it published so if you only look for that i would like to publish in spring journal as well so spring journal might be publishing some journals which does not has impact factor and which does not which are not listed into any of the databases so it is easy to get published in that journal which is still being published by spring journal uh then uh, you look at if you go for the database thing you are making your task really difficult if you are going into impact factor thing it is making your task more difficult for example uh, sage is publishing a vision i am amdabad journal uh, but uh, it is not having any impact factor right so uh, which means uh, say uh, the vision has not reached to the point so we look at i am amdabad as to be our makka of management uh, education but their journal also is not having impact factor as now uh, decisions uh, which is another journal i am calcutta uh, it is not also having uh, you know uh, and that factor so uh, impact factor the, the, the more you ladder up to this uh, you are making your task more difficult but you are getting getting towards more premiums then look at the grading of journal now for i i gave you two examples here abdc and uk abs abdc is australian business dean's council and uh, uk abs is united kingdom association of business schools now obviously these uh, uh, these categories comes from the management discipline but Uh, you might be into chemistry you might be into geography you might be into some other things so you must also be having the grading of the journals and only trust uh, those uh, gradings which actually stands at the international standards because i would tell you in the next slide you have a lot of people who are doing the dummy uh, grading of journals also you need to go to all those things so uh, abdc list the journals uh, it gives uh, it gives categories like c category journal d category b category a category and then uh, you have a star also so uh, likewise abs also gives the categories like level 1 level 2 level 3 level 4 and level 4 star so 4 star is best in abs and in abdc a star is best so now you are getting more into uh, premiums and then the last point is look at your research life cycle i mean this is a point that we generally kind of forget uh it is human tendency when we start doing something we look at our work and we say wow it can't get better than this 
it is super good it should make it to general marketing which is top general in my discipline but it would not make it look at my life cycle of my as a researcher i mean where in which stage i am in uh, i would explore this point a little bit but if i at today uh, i start targeting a four four star at an early stage it is very difficult so today if i expect that my article should publish into harvard business review uh, i am perhaps being more optimistic because they have lot of criteria uh, to uh, to include the journals into them so Th- that is that is something which is a sensible thing to do for you start from point number 1 only start publish only on those journals which are published by these when you are okay with them then you go to the database thing when you are okay with them then you go to impact factor journals when you are done with impact factor journals try to go to the grading journals and then in grading also you try to improve uh, your level as far as your publication grading is concerned right so these are five steps to journal selection these are five steps to identify which one is the premier journal it's right? important to note very important to note but one thing which i would like to caution here also uh predatory journals uh, we we are a nation who has uh, you know a lot of ways uh, i must not tell you perhaps you are getting my point but uh, look at this uh, there are predatory journals predatory journals are fake journals fake journals means these do not qualify to be called as journals but somehow they are existing right let me recall you the previous slide i have discussed these five points publisher database listing impact factor grading and research life cycle all of these predatory journals can claim that yes i am being published by a very prestigious publisher i am listed into a database so they will say jgate they will say google scholar i mean come on uh, google scholar picks up any tom dick and harry thing right use uh, google scholar is indexing my blog also how do you i mean what do you do so these are not prestigious we are not talking of those things at least we we you have to be a little bit conscious by yourself that when uh, you are publishing in a journal they are claiming that i am coming from a very prestigious publisher so uh, you need to know who are the prestigious publishers you don't need to get into the trap you need to look at uh, which database they are uh, actually indexed in i mean uh, needless to say if they are not into a prestigious database uh, you are into trouble they they are trying to fool you this is something which amazed me uh, impact factor thing uh, because i have put it as the third point into my premier journal selection criteria impact factor many of these fake journals they say that i have impact factor as i has tell uh, i tell you journal of marketing uh, being published by american marketing association top journal in my field i come from marketing is not having impact factor of 10 let me tell you right how come a journal being published somewhere in jhansi can have an impact factor of 10 and no one knows it it is fake see you have to look at the source also so impact factor if you would look at there, there is one agency only whose impact factor grading is accepted and that uh, that agency is uh collaborate analytics which comes from elsevier elsevier is a publisher uh, elsevier has a company collaborate analytics they give impact factor earlier this impact factor was given by thomson reuters so collaborate analytics has taken over thomson reuters as far as their impact factor is concerned so look at is this can impact factor coming from thomson reuters is it coming from collaborate analytics is it coming from elsevier and you will find absolutely no right top journals i tell you general consumer research does not has impact factor more than 5 how come how come you can have impact factor of 10 don't be fool at least please this is how at least we can come up uh, with our image in a better sense grading claim they can also claim that we are into grading things but you have to be careful and hence these five points they will try to fool you around all those five points but then you have to be uh, sure about yourself whether you are getting it into the right thing i'm showing you and sharing with you the two mails that i received uh, these are the snapshots screenshots which i've taken from my email you can see if i can show you you just have to follow the pointer the red pointer thing it was received on 6th may 2019 uh, this journal says i have impact factor of 4.90 uh, they call themselves as peer reviewed which is by monthly published journal uh, i don't know for what is the source of their uh, 4.49 so i leave it on to you i will not speak much on that this is the mail which i have received on 29th may 2019 they say that my impact factor is 
Now, let me tell you the uh, A category general journal of business research. Uh, it has an impact factor of 4.028. And uh, this journal has impact factor of 4.49. You, 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 you are uh, better people to understand uh, what I'm trying to say. So don't fall uh, for these things. Let me take you a little back on to this aspect because this is important. I take you back on in, in somewhere in 2018, uh, Indian Express has done an entire campaign around these fake research paper shops in India. Uh, they will ask money from you, they will publish and they will get profits. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, the big journals don't make profit, they do make profit, but we are not talking about them, we are talking about fake journals. India uh, is uh, kind of, you know, if you, if you would go back to this Indian Express series, uh, they have tons of information for you to know that where from these predatory journals are coming up, right? So this was published in July 2018. And then you have, because it was a full campaign, it was a series that they have published. You see, uh, there, was a, there was a company which was publishing one journal and they are now publishing 1500 journals in less than 10 years in Hyderabad, which is a hub of pay and publish. Uh, you just have to be super careful. You need not to be careful, you have to be super careful about this. Uh, then this is what happens to us. Scientific and data integrity is in question when we are publishing these and that is why uh, in research, we uh, still have to make our mark uh, at the international community. And then um, then Indian Express was actually after it, then the government also has come into in between. Those days, the then uh, HRD minister Prakash Javedkar uh, has answered a question in Lok Sabha. Uh, and he said, and we, I caught, we will end this minutes of uh, predatory journals. So uh, this is something that you have to be please careful about. Otherwise, we would never grow ourselves as a country where uh, the research is being done. So follow that thing. Uh, can you recall this UGC letter 14th June 2019? Uh, this is to the right hand side coming from UGC and I would like to highlight these two points if you can read it and if you cannot read it uh, let me read it to you it says any publication in predatory dubious journals or presentations in predatory dubious conferences should not be considered for academic credit for selection confirmation promotion performance appraisals award of scholarship or academic degree so academic de degree encompasses everything from PhD to uh, MBA because you are doing a project report in MBA also so it, it includes anything, everything, right? Vice chancellors, selection committees, research supervisors, guides, and all other experts involved in academic evaluation are have advised that they must ensure that their decisions are primarily based on quality, not on quantity. And uh, this is this is something where we are coming from. And if the, uh, the, the governing body of research and academics in India has to come up with this letter, that is a testimony to the fact that we are somewhere trapped into this uh, net of predatory journals, right? Important to note, and we have to be conscious because it ruins the careers, uh, let me tell you. What happens, you start publishing, uh, you, you, you will publish into this journal, they will give you the publishing certificate in a day or two, would ask you money, you say, oh, now see, I have got published. And then uh, if you're getting a publication in two days, two weeks, one week, you would never reach to those journals because you would say, hey, who would do all that toil when I'm getting it two weeks and I'm getting API also around this. And it is not about that. Other things also to look at, uh, this is uh, this is uh, kind of a work uh, that uh, my co-author, uh, Professor Paul, he is into USA, uh, is uh, currently editor-in-chief of International of Consumer Studies. Uh, he has shared with me and I kept on adding on to those things. When you select your journals, uh, this is your own work, you know, uh, that you need to look at. Many journals takes a lot of time uh, for publications because the quality takes time. And I will discuss on that also. Now, for example, this is a list which I prepared that might be handy to some of the people. Now, for example, there is this journal, British Journal of Management, being published by Ville. Uh, they would desk reject a paper within 11 days. And at least they will, uh, at max, they will take one month. So this is uh, the time that you need to look at because uh, there are journals which takes too much of time in publishing. Uh, there are journals who are little fast journals, right? And time given to reviewers, 30 days. Uh, so they give 30 days to their reviewers uh, to get back with the review. And actual time which this journal takes in giving the first decision to authors is 77 days. And do they reject after R2? R2 is revision two. I will talk about this revision cycles also. 
So you submit to a journal, then uh, editor send it to a reviewer, review suggests some changes. So when you are doing these changes, this is called as revision. So this is R2. R2, the moment your article has gone into revision, that is testimony to one fact, and that is that at least editor has liked your idea. Uh, and uh, you actually uh, have been accepted that, yes, it makes sense, and that is why it has gone into the review cycle. So uh, desk rejection rate is 53%, that was in 2016. Uh, and like Australian Marketing Journal, uh, do they reject after R2? This is unlikely, they don't reject. So it is better that if you get into this journal uh, and if it goes into the review cycle, it is unlikely that they would kind of, you know, reject the paper. International of Emerging Markets, I'm reviewer to this journal. So this is coming from my personal experience uh, because I'm reviewer to this journal published by Emerald. Uh, they take one month up to, uh, they, they take um, one week in uh, giving the test rejection decision and one month they give and they might take three months uh, which is 100 days around time to give you the final decision right so th that is also very handy to you so when you select the journals uh, you look for good journals and then in good journals also uh, it depends upon the editors how fast they are and that is why this is called the speed and processing time of journals uh, you have to look at the speed and processing time also because at times we need publication a little bit early right so uh, look at this uh, Journal of International Management. They have taken 30 days only in publishing an article. Uh, so which is uh, a very, very less amount of time. So they would have published a paper within 30 days, and that is a very good thing to do. Journal of International Marketing for today. So that, that, that information can be very handy to you. This is uh, average. I'm not saying that they do take this time, but this is, again, uh, a kind of cumulative, uh, our personal experience, and it is my personal experience, let me share it with you, that this is the average time which has been observed for these various publishers. Elsevier is the fastest publisher. Uh, if your paper gets accepted, uh, it takes two weeks for Elsevier to make your paper available online. And this is after your paper has been accepted. And how much time will it take for you to publish? It takes two weeks. Stinger takes up to four weeks, Billet take five weeks, Amral take up to eight weeks, InterScience takes a lot of time. So it might take a lot of time. I'm not saying they would take this, but it might take a lot of time. So this is uh, this is this is the information which can be handy to you. So what does it mean is uh, point number one: you are looking at the publisher. You go to Elsevier. It is fast. Its uh, processing is fast. It takes less time. If even they are going to reject your paper, they would not take much time so that you can submit your paper into some other journal. So uh, this is uh, what can be handy to you. Now, one more thing that you can look at, uh, this is about grading. Uh, uh, you know, we have uh, in management, we have two prominent categories, A, B, D, C, and A, B, S. Uh, and I have kind of, you know, populated some journals, which are popular journals, uh, with the grading things. Uh, why I'm showing this to you is just to let you one thing, that there is no problem, no argument, no confusion, no conflict over the top journals, the top of the class journals. Uh, Every ranking, every established ranking, uh, whenever they would categorize those journals, they would accept them as to be the top journals. For example, there is no, there is no point in discussing what whether marketing science is a good journal or not. It is a good journal because ABDC marks it as an A star journal, and ABS also calls it a four star journal. So this is the topmost category that you get into these two things. So Journal of Academy of Marketing Science published by Springer, A star, four star. So no point. But why I'm showing this to you is that look at this journal, Marketing, Intelligence, and Planning. ABDC is calling it as an A category journal, but ABS has put it at the entry level into their ranking. So uh, I, I told you that the four star is the best thing in ABS. Uh, uh, one is the least, two is better, three is even better, four is even better, four star is the best. So Marketing, Intelligence, Planning, ABDC says it is good. ABS says it is an entry point for my ranking, so you need to be a little careful, uh, and you, it, this information might also be handy to you, right? Uh, because when you go to European countries, uh, they prefer ABS ranking. Uh, uh, let me tell you, the promotion depends upon publishing in ABS. When you go to the Southern Hemisphere, like in Australia, uh, they have this ABDC list followed very religiously. So it depends. Uh, now, so, suppose someone out of you would like to go into the University of Adelaide, Australia, uh, you better be targeting the ABDC list journals. If someone is looking to go into London, uh, you might be targeting the ABS because they only consider the ABS. Right? So likewise, you can actually understand and that can, that can make you much better as an understander. So this was about general system. You know, how do you identify a journal? Uh, 
whether it is a premier journal or not and i hope that uh, that would have uh, that would have made you uh, understand that uh, yes this is a better journal uh, this is how we have to be careful about uh, not publishing into some fake and fictitious journals let me come to the second point then uh, articles categorization uh, this type of articles do we see in journals you see uh, we have broadly four uh, categories of articles which we academicians publish which we as uh, scholars publish and these are empirical uh, papers review papers number two conceptual papers and commentaries uh, these are four broad type of papers that we see so first one is empirical papers empirical papers are those papers where you are having a questionnaire you are collecting the data and then you are using this data to analyze you are putting it into some framework and then you are kind of coming up with your results and you say that this is what it is and i populate it for the entire population and this is how it can be generalized these are empirical papers then we have review papers also review papers are critical and constructive analysis of existing uh, publishing uh, literature so all the published uh, authors scholars researchers go back to those uh, things and then they uh, try to uh, make sense out of that and the review papers are very important papers let me tell you third one is conceptual and commentary so commentary will come and then conceptual will come these are scholarly review uh, and they comes from often a senior scholars so uh, as i was telling you into how to select a premier journal if i look at uh, a four star journal it is very difficult for me to publish so likewise if i try to publish a conceptual or a commentary today it is very difficult for me to do that right so first thing first uh, we need to understand and that is why people end up investing a lot of time and say that no i didn't get accepted into that journal whereas the other papers that are published in those journals were like very simple papers but my paper was so good even better than that but still they have rejected my paper so i don't know what is going on so it is just that that maybe we are targeting the wrong thing first right you actually need to understand that and only when you understand uh, the mechanism by which journal works it would be uh, more uh, kind of you know uh, probability you would increase your probability of publishing in those journals look at these uh, these both of these are my papers uh, international business review abdc a category journal uh, impact factor more than 3 uh, this is an empirical paper that i have done so because here if you would read this paper i have collected data and i have uh, you know um, so uh, this data was analyzed and the findings were presented and uh, this is how you know uh, we we projected and this is an empirical paper Uh, this is called as empirical original paper right this is another paper of mine uh, written with the professor paul from usa ananda big anithan he is dean in iim kozhikode uh, general business research another a category journal impact factor 4.028 this is a review paper uh, and you know it is difficult to write a review paper than a uh, empirical paper uh, empirical paper is easy because at least you have a structure you have established theory you have an established scale so what do you do is that you get the scale you try to uh, collect data on that scale and then you have established tools and techniques analytical tools which you are discussing in this workshop also and then you analyze the data on the basis of those tools and then you kind of make results and all that but in review you have no those things uh, i am told when i was looking at your brochure you are also being uh, offered uh, two uh, discussions two talks one is on uh, systematic literature review slrs so that is a review thing bibliographic review or bibliometric review that is also a review thing right so those things we will discuss in the first so you come to know what is a review article also but uh, this is uh, how we should be actually looking at this these are commentary articles uh, so uh, this is uh, a commentary on transformative marketing next 20 years uh, so uh, published uh, in general marketing uh, and uh, from being published by american marketing association a very very prestigious journal but that's the number one in, in our field so if today i write a comment this is generally what happens is that journals would ask the very very super senior scholars to write around the topic and they comment on to that topic and that is when it is called as commentary right so european journal of marketing a great journal uh, abdc list this is a commentary uh, which is the publications of marketing faculty who are we really talking to so this is coming from uh, european journal of marketing so th this is these are commentary papers so what this author is doing he is actually trying to 
uh, make sense for marketing faculties work being published in uc the journal of uh, marketing journal of marketing research journal of consumer research uh, these are commentary papers uh, why i'm showing these papers to you because you can go to those papers you can write the titles if it is possible for you and then you can read those papers and you can come to know that what are these papers in detail then you have conceptual papers uh, journal of marketing management uh, another very good journal from the house of taylor and francisco uh, they have come up with a special issue on conceptual articles so when they have come up with a special issue on conceptual articles uh, they actually are interested in evolving new theories right uh, so russ bell russell bell is the man uh, who is one of the guest editors of the special issue so this is russ parts and he is explaining how to talk of the conceptual contributions uh, if you are interested in knowing about conceptual articles you must read uh, all the papers published in this special review uh, in this special issue another very important article which is published often very late uh, which is very nearer to the time where we are sitting you see it was accepted on 4th february 2020 uh, if you can uh, if you can see this 4th february 2020 Uh, this is designing conceptual article for approaches. So the, uh, this paper is going to have a lot of citations in Times to come. Let me tell you, it was published in the AMS Review because uh, as we were just a while ago discussing that at least in empirical we have a framework. How do we do that? We do not did not have a framework till now, but now you have an article published which is talking about the approaches uh, uh, which could potentially be followed while you are publishing uh, a conceptual articles. So. very important paper to read if at all you want to know what is a conceptual article uh so understanding conceptual papers i would highly highly recommend you to go to this special issue of general marketing management those who are from the management field uh these are conceptual papers in marketing consumer research and russell bell jogora and manjeet they were the people who were handling this special issue and this is an important paper i have already shown uh, a screenshot to you uh, designing conceptual articles for approaches published in ams review in 2020 for february was accepted so these two articles if you would read them fully that would give you a first hand information of what is a conceptual article for sure now what do you adopt as a researcher uh, we now know that these are four type of uh, articles that are primarily published by academicians like us how do you target it uh, let me tell you uh, this is how we should follow the arrow means a lot uh, the arrow is starting from the left hand side of your screen it is going to the right hand side of your screen so first you should attempt the empirical articles only this is what the starting thing is right you should attempt empirical articles and uh, this is how i analytically uh, kind of you know uh, compared it with the uh, with the the other uh, there is a concept called as maslow uh, hierarchy of needs uh, i do not know how many of you are aware of those concept but uh, maslow says that our basic need uh, should be satisfied only then we should approach to the higher level of need so uh, analogically why i am saying this is because you first attempt for empirical papers and once your this quenches uh, okay then only you should go to the review thing which is more higher level of need uh, researchers need and then you should go to commentary article that is esteemed need because only higher senior scholars will publish it and only after that you will go to conceptualization if you are starting if you have started writing conceptual papers maybe you are about to retire uh, because very senior people uh, would write conceptual papers but i am not saying you cannot write you can write you can obviously write uh, all these type of papers but uh, that is why i written on a lighter side uh, that uh, just to understand the concept how should we approach the publication uh, if today i start writing a commentary if the first paper now you look at and go back to any author in your domain and you look at uh, his history or her history and you look at the first papers that they would have published most of them 95 out of 100 times 98 out of 100 times they would have started with empirical articles because it is easier to write empirical articles and then you go to review articles then you go to commentary then you go to conceptual no no people start with conceptual articles first they won't get accepted no people start with commentary and it is very difficult to start with the review articles also right so you first emphasize on empirical articles the uh, it is easy to publish into empirical articles so now we have looked at two 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 things the first thing was how to identify a premier journal that's what we have looked at and then we have looked at the categories of the articles and we have these four categories and which one should we target i have given you the chronological order the order in which you can potentially 
uh, select uh, a journal. With this, then uh, let us come to uh, uh, writing a research article. Uh, there are some things which we have to be very, very careful about. And let us uh, quickly touch upon because uh, uh, the clock is ticking away. So let's not kind of you know waste time on this. Now, uh, very, very important things. I think these uh, five things are super important things uh, in order to reach to a good journal. First thing is deciding on the research topic. Uh, and I always say this, uh, title is the most important thing. You should never, ever invest on dead horses. You won't get anything out of it, let me tell you. Uh, I would speak something on it. I, I would spend some time on it. Uh, second thing uh, is uh, detailing of article. Uh, what is the structure? What should be the structure like? Uh, it's more or less same for the journals. The formatting may be different, but the ethicality becomes an issue. Then we talk of time. Uh, you have to remember time, you know, uh, because you are publishing today. You are not publishing in 1990s or in 2000s. You are publishing in 2020. I will spend some time on it also. Collaboration. Uh, don't treat yourself as an expert uh, in everything. Make a team. And I will tell you that how much important is this point. Patience. Rejections are part of process. Uh, if you are not uh, patient when... Uh, you better adopt any other field that would be better for you. Let us start uh, on these things one by one. Deciding on research topic, the first point, writing a research article. Don't do redundant research, never do it. So uh, see, generally what I found, because, uh, because I am from India, so these journals, when they send papers to me, uh, uh, they, many of the time these papers are from Indian context because the context is important. Uh, then I also receive articles and I've been to conferences also where the editors have shared their perspective on to what is coming from our country and what is coming from elsewhere. elsewhere. It has been found that we have been doing redundant research. Don't work on something because you just like the topic. Come on, it, is, it doesn't matter you like it or not. It absolutely does not matter. You might like a typewriter today. It, doesn't, it is not required. You might like a CRT-based television, cathode ray tube. They are gone. It is not about your liking. Let, let it be very clear to you. Generally, the scholar, when he comes into uh, the universities, they would say, sir, I like this topic. Should I work on it? Come on. It is not about your liking. We are not the uh, Ajay Kohli of general marketing who, who, who likes something and that becomes the things. We have not reached to that point yet. So that means you are trying to start time with yourself. You have to put yourself into time. This is the problem that we do most of the time. Right. What do we do is that we generally would replicate the existing theory. Uh, let me let me uh, select the pen. That would be much easier. What we do, we, we usually replicate the existing theory with the reason that it is not done in, in your region. You look at the papers. Most of them would say, I am uh, working on this model. This was not done in my region. Uh, and that is why I am doing it. And this is my gap. Uh, this is a problem. This is a problem. Uh, don't select a topic because you like the topic. Look at whether this topic is relevant in today's time or not. Right. So you have to seek novelty. Seek novelty means you have to uh, you have to look newness. You have to look the contemporary times. Identify area and read literature about it. How then? How should you start? I mean, it is so easy to say that don't uh, work on existing theory. Should everyone be developing a theory? No, I am not saying that. We cannot do that. I cannot do that. We are too premature to do that. But what should we do is, I'm giving you a solution of the above point. How do not we do, we don't do redundant research. We have to first identify the area of our choice. See, there is difference between identifying the topic of your choice and identifying area of your choice. You, you would obviously see interest is everything in research. Uh, you are interested in doing financial uh, derivative uh, research. You do that. That is your area. That is fantastic. You select your area, whatever is your area, whatever you like, wherever your natural inclination is. Uh, so we naturally like something. I mean, we can't, we can't help it. And if you naturally like something, if you do something in that, obviously you would do some uh, good coloring into it. But if you are forced to do something which you don't like, obviously you won't do good to it. So you like and identify your own area. Identify the area, not the topic. And then read literature. Read literature around it. 
and record it. Read more, read more, read more, read more. So if if you are into PhD, uh, you should be spending your six months of say PhD program in reading more and more literature about it. You keep on collecting the papers. You keep on reading those papers, and when you would record those papers. and then you would look at it world i view the umbrella view when you would look at it you would immediately realize that see this i started from 1980 say i'm interested in uh, into x so i have started downloading the papers related to x from 1980 so now i have papers related to x till 2020 so when you would look at the flow of the evolution of this x from 1980 to 2020 you would immediately see the missing links and that is that and that is where you should work so you are still working in your like like uh, in an area that you like and at the same time you are actually talking sense because that is actual gap when you say i am trying to address this gap you can never address a gap unless you know read the literature of that area very clear on this super clear and that is what you can see into the papers being submitted by scholars they have not done the proper literature review how how on earth can we identify the gap then i do not know the did you see you have children in the home when you don't know your children how would you know what is your problem and this is essentially we are talking here we need to read the literature what is published in past currently and then only we will come to know see this is where i can contribute this is the answer to how do we do non redundant research very important point journals are profit making houses i am talking about these premier journals also uh their customers are big corporate houses so google is subscribing to many it journals uh, so the microsoft would also be subscribing uh, i remember when i published this paper into international business review that was around laptops in india uh, i remember the marketing head of lenovo wrote a mail to me and he was asking for a copy of this paper because he is heading the marketing of lenovo in india so these people are interested in this research right so they are selling journals are selling to these people they are making profit if we, they don't publish relevant they don't sell simple maths we all know this if you are producing something which people don't need who would buy you no i vividly remember uh, i was into this conference in i am lucknow i absolutely remember this uh, the celebrated author uh, naresh malhotra who has written this book also those who are into marketing would know him marketing research and applied orientation currently this book is with satyabhushan dash professor from iim lucknow uh, he was sharing his experience there was this editors meet and i quote his words to you he says that if i receive a paper suppose on circle i don't even look at the paper and just put it into the bin because circle is something which has been so much worked on so much work done what is what novelty you are seeking to serve it is like there is this fan which is over my head now i would like to do research on fan come on what research would you do everyone knows it the mechanics of the fan is absolutely established there is no newness into it i will not publish it because no one is interested in this right so the novelty one of my uh, uh, one of my students has recently got admission into iit madras uh, in phd and he was sharing his experience i am telling you the very uh, very uh, practical things he has sent his proposal to iit madras on artificial intelligence in marketing ai in marketing this is something that is making sense today journals will accept anything which is published around the uh, uh, artificial intelligence in marketing right i remember i give you one more example i remember uh, one of my phd mates uh, his phd was into food marketing and uh, in those days you know uh, we have opened up uh, our economy to the outer people and the bharti walmart were uh, willing to invest in india and they were trying to understand india as a market when they come to know because you were presenting in i am lucknow uh, so someone from from, uh, from from there was there and he was interested in looking at this work and later on uh, that author who has worked on to food marketing was also invited to uh, Uh, invited to their country and he has gone and he has discussed the things that what is happening around this so when you are working relevant people would actually come to you if you are investing into dead horses absolutely not how do we know we are investing into dead, dead horses uh, suppose your area is xyz go to the top journals in your area and then try to see uh, 
what type of papers have been published in this journal in last 5 years in last 10 years right so if you are thinking of doing research on x topic if not a single article has been published in these journals in last 5 years and 10 years that means topic is dead the journals don't publish it journals don't publish it that means it is not a good topic to go on if this was your topic that you like please change it because they say that the research start after phd this doesn't end at phd degree it start there so uh, th that is where i will come to this last point your topic must be live for years to come so when you are taking admission into phd in suppose say 2020 you would be completing your phd in 2024 hypothetically i'm saying and then in 2024 you will start working and start publishing around that topic now with that means what you are eyeing publications around a topic in 2025 sitting today so that means what that means your topic that you are deciding today should be live at least for next 10 years if it is going to be dead in next 10 years journals are not going to accept your work and this is a this is a this is the trouble uh, that many of our scholars face we should not make our scholars to work on those topics which are dead topics journals would not accept them right so now uh, your topic has to be live very important point uh, the very important point here also uh, when you are selecting a topic of research you are not selecting that topic only for one research you know there is something which is called as expertise people are known for certain things so sigmund fred is known for psychoanalysis so uh, jennifer a aker is known for happiness research so uh, professor paul known for mastis research uh kevin l keller known for brand equity brand research this is their expertise you know so say keller has chosen brand as his research topic the wider area the brand equity now this gentleman would publish again and again onto the same area and around the same topic right so when you are selecting a topic you are not selecting it for one article so if you are selecting a topic only for one article and you say i then i will leave it you are doing it wrong my friend because the the coming times is going to be the times of expertise you should invest yourself into a topic so that when after 5 years someone looks at you uh, someone looks at your profile they say oh come on he has published 10 papers on xyz that means he knows about xyz contrary to this if someone looks at your profile and it is found that uh, one article on a another article on c another article on p another article on q what you should be approach for problem right so expertise so that is why your topic selection is so important because your career depends on it right so the people who have invested their time on artificial intelligence they are consulting companies today because they are expert in that they would have published papers around this right so this is how uh, uh, you know we have to uh, look at it then detailing of research article the point number 2 in that slide uh, structure of an article the first point uh, structure of an article is more or less same for all the journals so there is no point it is readily available in form templates and you must use reference management tools like mendeley uh, i am i am told that in one of your uh, talks you are also going to discuss about reference management tools i am not going to spend time on this right positioning of article very important i will spend some time on this uh, theory and argument building this is where most of us fails and uh, we don't make it to these journals connecting the dots has been a big big issue i i would i would speak on that what is this and then i would talk about some generally overlooked points uh, we, we we are expert but our readers are not expert uh and uh, we are the people who have scientific and analytical rigor uh, but the replication of results is also important i will speak on this also and then the research has to be ethical this is about how do you write this let us go on to this one by one structure of the research article more or less every journal has uh, the same heads you start with introduction you go to review you go to methodology you go to analysis discussion and then references and if if, if the structure is different the journal will tell you Uh, very clearly, uh, when they are having the templates available, it is everything available. So there is no brain on this. Intro. Very quick things on to this. Introduction is about introducing the topic to readers, and in also introduce the reasons for the work. The gap that I was talking about that needs to be told. 
one very quick thing onto this uh, you would realize that if you go into the top journals the introduction of the articles in those journals doesn't speak of definitions i suppose you are publishing publishing into brand equity the articles might not be defined what is brand equity because it is assumed that some the reader of this journal would know what is brand equity let us directly come to the business what is the point directly come to that so you introduce your research problem you don't introduce the concepts to the readers in top journals that is uh, and generally uh, when uh, when when we receive articles from here uh, we found that we keep on uh, defining the things which has already been established so much and so and uh, you know journals don't have that extra space also to publish those uh, conceptual definitions because everyone knows that so uh, then we were talking methodology methodology is about uh, methods followed you all know these things uh, analysis is about application of tools discussion is about now this is an area where uh, most of the uh, people do some serious and commit some serious mistakes not serious mistakes we commit super serious mistakes around this issue and i will spend some time on this now when uh, you are talking of this review thing you should use your review to develop your hypothesis uh this is so important uh, one thing which is so simple but is asked by uh, reviewers so many times when i have submitted my manuscripts to them uh, we generally define hypotheses we say h1 is this we say h2 is this we say h3 is this but uh, it is better uh, it would be convenient to include a graph that intuitively reflects the relationships established uh, and that we are using as hypothesis so for example our hypothesis can be that source credibility leads to change in consumer attitude or source credibility impact consumer attitude so we can write it as h2 and our h2 is this instead you say that uh, source credibility leads to consumer attitude we just portray it like this now this is kind of a graphical representation that makes your paper look good also and uh, that is a kind of a bird eye view thing very quickly they can know what is your hypothesis very uh, quick thing on to this uh, why i'm sharing this is because i have got it at least from two to three reviewers initially uh, when i sent some papers to some of the journals positioning of research article uh, this is a very uh, important issue and i am sharing my experiences because i have reviewed uh, those things and i have written back to authors saying that you need to correct the positioning of this article and what are the issues because i am also looking at time i need to be little fast now so issue number no first of all what is positioning of article uh, you see you you are writing an article around one research issue research uh, question what happens is uh, we do reverse engineering and this is what i have highlighted here uh, reverse engineering is what we first try to identify the papers related to the topic that we are doing and then we make an excel sheet or we make a word document where we put down the findings from those papers that we have downloaded and then somehow we try to make these findings part of our literature review that we are writing and meaning thereby we are assuming that when i am uh, kind of you know uh, have spent some time in reading this article why should i let it go waste i should actually be uh, you know i should actually be using this uh, into my uh, research article now you, you, you it is not the case you know you actually have to look at whether it makes sense there or not right for example if you are looking at the effect of advertising on sales please do not go here and there please do not go here and there uh, you just have to stick to that thing only that is positioning so positioning means it has to be very compact thing you know very compact it is not going out of the topic at hand at any point of time so the issue number 2 that we have observed is paper looks as an illogical combination of discrete arguments now i call it as a uh, reading shock and this is the word which i use when i am writing back to the authors your paper would give reading shocks to me as a reader i am not doing i i am not interested in that you know i am here to read an article you are giving me reading shocks so reading shocks means what i was reading a a a a a okay you take me to the b from a but then what happens is a b making sense o z o q how come q how you jumped from one thing you were discussing in this paragraph and then second paragraph you are you started discussing almost a new thing you you are you are preparing a presenting illogical combination of discrete arguments this is this is not what we need right 
So Ajay Kohli, who is currently a former chief of uh, general of marketing, he says that it is better that you try to uh, have a very short summary of your entire article to see whether you have the positioning issue or not. That that will help you. We can have a. I mean, one can discuss. I can discuss for two hours only on positioning related things. It is such an important issue that we actually fail most of the times. Every bit, uh, uh, ensure every bit uh, to have a smooth flow of writing without reading shocks. Uh, you should not give shocks to, to, to your readers. Very important, uh, don't attempt to do too much in a paper. Stick to a very precisely defined problem. If you would try to touch upon too many things together, it would be a positioning issue. You are not making a compact uh, research. You are not addressing a compact research question. You are actually addressing too much. Articles often fail to establish place in existing literature. Super duper important. I would call it death important. Where do you place your argument in the existing literature? If you as an author cannot answer this question of mine as a reviewer, I'm not going to say yes to this paper. Very clearly. And that is where when I was discussing about review literature a while ago, I was letting you know that you need to identify a topic read the papers around it and then when you will have a bird eye view of this you will know this is where the problem is and i should work on that if you have done that way you will be able to answer this question and your paper your article your findings would be placed into that gap which is there now this is where the placement the positioning of this paper is into the current literature if you are not able to answer this question you have a positioning issue uh, then it is difficult to find right position of article unless considerable literature is reviewed. That is what I have already told you. Okay. Uh, let me share this to you, with you. This is a review sheet. Uh, this is a review that I have done for general promotion management. Uh, I, uh, because uh, we have uh, some policy things, so I uh, cannot share uh, and I must not share the title of the paper because it is still under review. Uh, but this, uh, see what I have written. I mean, uh, these these are super classical positioning issues. Uh, you can read the highlighted thing. Uh, uh, the author start with argument of exploring perceived benefit. This is where I am reading perceived risk as perceived from advertisement. This is on to page two, line forty four of the author's paper, where they write in quotes an attempt has been made in the present study to investigate the services advertisement effectiveness on the respondent's purchase intention. As the paper progresses, uh, the advertisements are not coming into picture. Sudden insertion of T, TAM model. This is positioning issue, the flow issue, the connecting of dots issue. Right? Another thing, development of argument in the paper is very weak. It can be found at multiple places. One such example is page 4, line 50. For Agarwal, this, this thing. In first line, it is claimed that both these studies signify that financial services, commercials, creates awareness. Whereas in just next line, it is written that these two studies reveal that bank officials, relatives, banks, etc. play a larger role, which these two things are contradictory to each other and quoted from the same paper. Right? How do you, I mean, what are you trying to tell me? You are confusing me. You will confuse my readers also. You need to rectify this. Right? Another article uh, that I've reviewed, Asia Pacific General Marketing Logistics coming from Emrath. Uh, authors again failing on to the positioning issue. Uh, uh, see, uh, this is what I have started writing them. I started reading the paper with excitement, but soon I find soon I find myself confused as a reader. The paper is seriously lacking in connecting the dots. There are reading shocks as there are absence of smooth transition. And then I am explaining this is like three to four page review that I have sent to them. This is another positioning issue, and this is the article on the right hand side where I am highlighting what and why I am telling these things to them. Right? You need to look at these things and you need to have an answer to those things. Now let us come on to the overlooked aspects while you are writing some papers and ethical aspects of research, research article. The first thing is discussion section. I would uh, uh, urge all of you to spend a lot of time in writing discussion, a lot of time. Because discussion section, now read this line, uh, discussion section is about calibrating your study with earlier work and make the positioning strong. It should be written thinking that one would read discussion only, still readers should know the past and present of the topic at hand. Now just to make sense of this, what I have written here is that suppose I pick up an article, 
I don't read its introduction. I don't read its literature review, methodology, analysis. I don't read anything. I just directly come to the discussion section. Is discussion section a complete thing in itself? Right. When I read the discussion section, it should address to the positioning uh, problems. It should place the findings of this study into the existing literature. By reading discussion only, I should come to know what was done on this topic before, what I have found. how what i have found is contributing to the existing literature and this is how my study has contributed to this if i am not able to collect this information by reading the discussion section of a paper we are having a problem with this discussion right second point is implications and future research agenda uh, your discussion should lead to practical implications uh, these implications should lead to future research agendas Uh, important point: Journals are always interested in citations because it increases the impact factor. Future research agenda increases the citations of the paper. You know, many of us, uh, you would be reading the papers, you would find that uh, when you are writing about the gap, uh, you would say that so and so author has said that this should be worked on. You have cited them, and why you have cited them? Because this is what they have suggested the further researchers to do. So. having a future research agenda section in your paper increases the citations right of the journals increases the chances of citations of that journal which is a very important thing for them right so you should actually be getting a hold of that okay now uh, then ethical aspects i will spend some time on ethical aspects also very important ethical aspects are no less than plagiarism i would like to spend some time on all, all, all these points let us go i would not name this journal uh long back i have submitted an article and uh, this is what i have got as a review sheet the reviewer of this journal has asked me that please delete citations from the discussion section and put them into literature review section he is talking of the discussion section which i have given from page number 22 to 28 whatever now uh obviously this journal is not a top journal because everyone starts uh, with uh, uh, with okay okay journals things but uh, this is something which is problem you know uh, we cannot ask this you know you go to any good journal you go to any good journal and you will invariably realize that the discussion section is the most literature and rich section that you will find into the paper because uh, i this uh, editor in chief of international journal of consumer research i am on to the editorial review board he was sharing with me people would write discussion as an essay which means they don't cite anything they don't give references early research let me tell you very important thing my friends the difference between a research article and a magazine is only this you can also write an article on brand equity in a magazine but that is your opinion piece why it is an opinion piece because you feel so this is your opinion and that gets published into india today or to anything when you are writing same on the same topic into journal it is not going to be an opinion piece my friends it it cannot be your opinion it has to be on the basis of earlier literature and how you have contributed to the earlier literature how your findings are actually contributing to the existing literature around this topic if you are not addressing this even god will not help you the, the editor in chief was telling me people are writing essays in discussion it is not going to work i am giving you a discussion section of my idr paper international business review which i have just shown you you look at how many citations i have given one two so the thing which is highlighted into uh the the blue thing is are all the citations are all the references right so if you do not do that uh, problem now for example look at this line another dimension of understanding the support for hypothesis 2 uh, from the literature perspective takes us back to the work of keller and lehman where he proposed a link between this and that so what i am doing now is i am placing my finding i am trying to find the place of my finding into the existing literature i am saying keller said this he has proposed a link and this finding is around that link 
and this is how we are making sense of this unless you don't do that go to a magazine and write an article because the good journalists will not accept you right so this is so important that we actually happen to overlook and if we will keep on doing this and i call discussion as to be a death important section of any research paper where you know it is that by thousand cuts i tell you for an editor to receive a paper and find no citations and no references in discussion it is that by thousand cuts because he feel that what to do with this paper now then uh, come to the ethical thing uh, while writing my friends uh, ethical things today uh, ethics in research is not uh, something which is a luxury it is a mandatory thing. and i would like to explain this by uh, showing you this paper it is journal of global marketing uh, published in 2016 and it was published by someone uh, saloni pavandivan uh, obviously from india uh, she is from kurukshetra university investigating the relationship among desired actual whatever the title of the paper is so this is the credentials of the author right now this is the abstract right then this thing comes up in this journal and this is a reply and what is this reply reply to this paper published by this author and here is what the ajay manray who is the editor in chief of journal global marketing he writes on reflection i find the above work does not propose any hypothesis nor does the work posit a conceptual framework or model that could be empirically tested i also note that the empirical study is based on a sampling methodology which may compromise the scientific validity of the research reported i recommend that the readers are mindful as such can you imagine an editor writing about a paper publishes in or in his own journal and asking the readers to be careful while the finding of these papers are being used right ethical things if you, if 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 your if your findings cannot be repopulated it is a problem look at this uh, this is in july 13 2019 127 papers from india were retracted due to image duplication and manipulation what is retraction retraction is when an editor in chief found a problem with the published paper the paper is published after that it is retracted right so that means what now imagine this we are applying for our promotion your and my api is getting fulfilled because of this paper i have got the promotion i became associate professor professor tomorrow and then my paper is rejected what will happen to my promotion now the paper is no longer in journal you cannot claim the marks of that paper ethical issues if you manipulated the data at any point of time it is found that you manipulated the data you are going to be in trouble the story does not end when you have published the paper actually story begins you need to understand this because until it was not published it was only you who were reading this paper after publication the world can view this paper and anyone can ask anything on this and journals because they are charging money from their clients they have to get it to their clients needs right so look at this two very elite medical journals retracted corona virus papers over data integrity questions and this is in june 4 2020 we are sitting on june 8 today so corona virus hot topic hot topic hot topic i was just yelling out loud and clear a while ago that you should be speaking of a topic which is currently like obviously corona virus is like but if you have data integrity questions over this journals will retract it and one of the journals is the lancet if you if you don't know about lancet it is a top journal in medical field and this is another very very important journal in new england journal of medicine they retracted the papers and you say they write high profile papers and this is not a author publishing this is a company who has declined to make the underlying data available to the journal so you say that i have done this empirical research you have the data with you and then uh, the journal asks for this data you say i will not you know, supply this data to you you are in the problem that means there is something wrong right either you are going to use this data again into your further research that is plagiarism or uh, you do not have data or you manipulated the data so that is going to be a problem 
right so this is uh, about the ethical issues now time remembering the time you are submitting in 2020 my dear friends you need to remember this so uh, why does it uh, uh, why is it important with all due respect to our very senior professors uh, the time has changed right time has absolutely changed you would invariably realize that those ages old thing which someone uh, would tell you they do not stand still today right you know, for example your title i would speak on this title uh, title invites audiences uh, don't choose a boring topic many examples establish this fact uh don't be orthodox orthodox means don't don't feel that whatever was true in 1990 the way the research was conducted in 1990 the way it was written in 1990 it would still be uh, relevant no case management right display your work let us talk about these issues one by one this is an email that i've got to uh, in response to a paper that i've submitted to spanish journal of marketing which is a scopus index journal uh the the title i kept was issues and criticism of acres brand personality skill review that was a review paper and this is editor in chief carlos writing to me uh, this is what he is saying uh, you should consider to change the title for other more informative that can catch eye of the reader the attention of the reader should be drawn to the paper otherwise the paper won't generate many citations you know this is what i was telling you uh so you need to be very careful about titles uh, the, the editors actually kind of you know take care of these things and then i have given this uh, title i was born loud accepted with self criticize and this was accepted the so change in title now uh, i have to keep uh, the time in mind maybe uh, how much time do i have now uh, organizers if you can very quickly tell me accordingly i will manage it how much time do i have so can you conclude in 10 minutes because we, then we have to take q and a as well okay okay i will try to do that okay, so uh, now i will be little fast now uh, then you can write me back to me with queries if you have any because we have short of time we are time short now so you have to exercise creativity in titles look at this uh, uh, this is a title yes no i have been sleeping and now now i am dead on death the body in medicine tell me 5 years before 10 years before who would argue and who would say that yes let us keep this as a general title uh, or a paper title they would say no these papers are published today general marketing paper top journal when 1 plus 1 greater than 2 can you imagine this being in the title accepted by general marketing the top journal journal of consumer research another top journal ft journal ft financial times journal financial times journals are those journals if in india you publish in an ft journals and if you are an i am faculty you will get 15 lakh rupees straight away no questions asked that be the journal in that you have this title i want to know the answer give me fish and chips people who says this a title no this these are titles another title you just look at our work uh, and see if you have any freedom on or honor this is like a line this is not a title that's not so bad i will eat more backfire effects of calories but whatever, whatever so titles you have to exercise creativity in your titles if you don't do that it is a problem quickly i am going through body of manuscript earlier we would we, we were told that don't use the word i uh, we word has been currently used this is just one example i have published this is a snapshot from my blog uh, about the article that i published in international business review wherein uh, i have uh, given uh, i have used the word be more often that is not a problem right so uh, uh, this is the important line it's about coming to the point and look at the contribution methodology theory building and argument building in the article which is more important than these words right so if your idea is good you would be through space management the third thing look at this table i this is a example table that i have given you where an uh, anovas applied this is again from the published thing here four anovas are represented in one uh, table only 1 2 3 and 4 right journals uh, have a cost when they are producing articles so they don't want see what people would do they would copy the spss output files and they will paste it output tables paste it no it doesn't work four tables in just one article so four uh, anovas into one table space management collaboration with others uh, so collaboration is very important 
you are not an expert in everything perfection is god's business and if you feel that you are expert uh, uh, i have nothing to say on that collaborating with others expand our horizons also you have no idea how much you will learn when you will collaborate so currently i am working with six authors from portugal serbia uk singapore and i know that all five of them have very different uh, flavor of working and from every uh, you know, these authors i am learning a new thing uh, and you just do not know when we will move out and we'll talk to the people only we will come to know about this general prefer it i will show you this thing to you help you in establishing yourself uh for example i have taken it as a snapshot this is from scopus wherein they are uh, rating the journal you see one of the criteria is international collaboration this is what i am speaking about so this journal uh, in 1999 it has 0 uh, to 1 international collaborations in 2017 it has 50 uh, collaborations which means the articles published in this journal represents the 50 countries or the 50 different authors if you are having international collaborations with you uh, chances are that the reviewer will not uh, the editor will not best reject you uh, and uh, so we can speak a lot around this but i think i have made the point so the last point if uh, it comes with time have patience <laughs> very important uh, it will take time uh, the starting to publish cycle can be in years uh, you cannot help it reviewers uh, might trouble you uh, second point is editors might annoy you because uh, journals have 65% rejection rate and many time without reason you will in your view it will be without reason but it has all the reasons reviewers might trouble you by giving their comments rejections are part of life and the quality sticking is so important so i am being little fast now now this is a paper that i must tell you uh, you see this date uh, if i if you can see this let me read it for you received in 26 april 2016 this is the date when i have submitted this article to the journal and it was accepted on 22 september 2017 so one and a half years it took for the journal to accept and publish this article if you don't have patience uh, there is a problem and then this thing which is now highlighted in the red in the bottom it says uh, about an article which took 8 months only to publishing the date when i submitted in the day it was published it took 8 months so you have to have patience another thing uh, this is an author uh, which uh, i am currently working with professor uh, nobre from portugal university of aero i have exchanged so far 95 emails with her i am working on a project with her now you see uh, the first thing first communication i have had with her was on uh, 30th october 2019 it is into the bottom thing i am highlighting and the screenshot i took yesterday which was sunday 7th june from october to june i have exchanged 95 emails and till there we have finalized the questionnaire and now she is going to get it done from the ethical committee of our university and uh, because europe has very tight data collection norms she is sitting in portugal so then we will float this uh, questionnaire into the uh, market with the agency with the help of an agency so 95 emails only we have reached to the question formulation it took by patience another thing uh, with justin paul another of my co author i have exchanged 703 emails and i we have published two papers together till now it requires patience lot of work right uh, it doesn't come like this now this is the reviewers comment sheet uh, this is the comments that we have got from the reviewers uh, page 1 page 2 page 3 this is what you get from reviewers and you have to address each one of those concerns and if you don't address this you are into trouble actually the reviewer is not going to accept it right understanding rejections why you why you are getting rejected look at this most of the studies are replicated i have already told you only reason is that it is not in your region i spent time on this 20% of our articles are plagiarized you have a session on plagiarism i think uh, dr ishwar would speak on that is an expert on that i have attended one of his session last time also so you must be very careful about plagiarism and then look at uh, why the journal suggest you this is a data between january and may 2020 journal of marketing has received 306 papers only in these six months international journal of consumer studies a grade journal apdc 455 submissions general of retailing and consumer services a grade journal 500 submissions general of business research 2000 plus submissions come on i am editor in chief journal of business research i am getting 2000 papers and let me uh, only yesterday the chief uh, 
we were doing some conference and uh, we come to know it was 2200 articles come on and what what do we get published now this journal would hardly publish 50 articles in this 6 uh, months 50 articles you have to select out of the 2000 articles published and all the articles would be coming from the good people good scholars they would reject you if, if they find slightest of the problem in your article they would reject you. major reasons for desk rejection desk rejection is what when even the editor doesn't send an article to the review they the article arrives as a desk and he rejects it the number one is the contribution uh, your contribution is minimal you are not able to uh, justify the contribution of your article number two is originality there is no novelty interest to general audience uh, the scope is a problem Uh, and others others include the scope the type of paper age of reference is important point you are submitting in 2020 the latest reference that you have given is from 2010 doesn't make sense good 10 years has passed since then right so that is a problem ethical conventions length of the articles clarity of language style referencing self referencing proofreading i hope this session is getting recorded on youtube so you might look at it because we have a short time then the last thing uh, and then i would try to wrap it up a practical guide at least from my experience what happens when you submit to a journal the first stage is that it goes to the editorial office it is checked by the journal staff the editor is not looking at your paper now at this stage it is checked for plagiarism and if it is plagiarized it is sent back to author saying that it is plagiarized we will not publish it we are not taking it out if it is okay in the plagiarism it goes to editor in chief now chief checks for its contribution and originality as the parameters i have shown you in the previous slide among other things if it is either desk rejected if it is having problem on those points or it goes to the next stage this is stage number 2 when editor is okay that it seem it is looking okay uh, then let us make this thing into the third stage the so third stage is area specific editors now for example management science is a journal which accepts the papers from various areas general business research is a journal which accepts papers from operations also for mechar also for finance also so maybe editor in chief is from marketing so he do he had no uh, that type of expertise into the finance domain so he would send it to the area specific editor so the finance man so it either goes to deputy editor in chief managing editor senior editor associate editor different journals have different mechanisms of doing this again these people if it goes to senior editor or associate editor they will check it for contribution if they found it okay they send it to three reviewers blindly uh then uh, uh review cycles uh the review cycle uh, it has gone to the reviewers now uh reviewers are given one month to 45 days of time the reviewers would either suggest major revision minor revision or rejection uh very important point two out of three reviewers have to accept the paper only then editor can accept it if out of three reviewers two reviewers say it is reject uh, even editor cannot accept it and then the final decision rests with editor in chief he takes the call depending upon all the previous things so why would editorial office send back the manuscripts to you uh, you can talk of referencing style be careful about the referencing style you have a session coming on for this length of manuscript let me tell you uh, elsevier is the only publisher which accepts the article in social sciences in the length of 12k 12000 uh, otherwise emerald or the other uh, journals averagely i am saying emerald have one journal which is young consumers they are also accepting articles in the length of 12000 words but mostly journals of emerald would stick the articles length to 9000 words so you have to be careful about that also formatting issues tables and figure position uh, ethical issues uh, i would so a little bit on this then uh, things which matters practically first is ethical sensitivity never submit after manuscript handling reviews and collaborate quickly this is a very very important mail that i received from uh, the office of journal of consumer psychology which is an fp journal uh, we have submitted a manuscript on that uh, it would take time otherwise i would love to explain this to you what they have written is can you imagine this now this they have sent back me fine saying that uh your name is visible into the file so you have to remove your name so this is what they say please remove ajay link to the mda uh you know what do they mean uh, i am using mac so i have a different mechanism but those who are using windows platform open uh, don't open your word file right click on to the word file go to the properties in properties go to general section and then detail section 
in detail section you will have the author written as ajay you know they are so much specific <laughs> that a word file i am submitting because i have a system it is a system i have purchased it so my name is on the system so every file i will make the author of that file is going to be ajay so it is very deeply hidden even 98 out of 100 people don't know that the word document created by anyone can be known by going to that detail the name was nowhere into the entire manuscript they have caught it and they have sent it back to me ethicality management science uh, now my paper is currently under review in this journal uh, this is as recent as 18th may 2020 uh, we have sent a paper uh, brand prestige and ontology of consumer happiness now they have sent back our uh, uh, paper to us saying that uh, you have to fill a data and code disclosure form unless you don't do that we would not send you paper to review and then i have uh, kind of you know made it very clear we would comply with the policy of journal uh, if article is accepted so which means i have to share my data with this journal if this article gets accepted if i say i will not share my data they will turn off the review process here only so when i have the data given to them they have published my article the data is with this article on public domain any one of you also can go and download that data and can try to replicate the results which i have claimed in my thing and if there are problems there are problems so ethically don't escape don't manipulate and the reviewers last point reviewers are experts who are trusted by editors so these these are gates you know this is gate number 1 this is gate number 2 this is gate number 3 this is gate number 4 you have to pass through all these gates to reach to the publication right so reviewers are expert who are trusted by editors for their expertise reviewers are responsible for maintaining quality you have to satisfy the reviewers if you don't satisfy the reviewers you cannot work it out you can report the reviewers but very logically so does it mean that whatever reviewer tells us we need to blindly accept it no give logics uh, we don't have time otherwise i would have shown this to you this is a review sheet that we have got uh, and the response that we have submitted now the title of this is response to reviewers comment this is a response that we have submitted for our article published in journal of business research a grade journal 4.0 impact factor you see uh, how, what is the length of a paper uh, published paper 15 pages 16 pages 17 pages look at the length of this response sheet only response file 3 pages 6 pages 9 pages 12 pages 15 pages 17 pages and i have given the references also because i was trying to convince the reviewer so 17 pages is the response to the reviewers comments that have come to my paper that toil goes behind and that is what it takes to convince the reviewer so i have got this sheet report how to report reviewers this is uh, research observation uh, reviewer observation number 16 author response ar is author response so uh, i was uh, of the opinion that i would try to read it to you how to report the reviewers but since time is less i will not go deep into this just what i am trying to tell you is that only one observation of reviewer this is the observation and how much do you need to convince them look at this uh, page number 1 page number 2 the response to the same uh, observation page number 3 page number 4 it took me four pages to convince reviewer on only his one point right i have cited the people also because what i am saying i am not saying from my end and that is how we report it and ultimately the paper was accepted so four pages thing i am writing only for one observation of the reviewer that is how you convince this right then uh, the last thing uh, i wish to tell you before i uh, close this session then we go to q and a let me confirm you that we have got it in ourselves uh why i am saying this is because look at it uh, ajay kohli uh, he was former editor in chief journal of marketing the top journal navin thontu who is current editor in chief of journal of business search anirban mukhopadhyay uh, editor in chief of journal of consumer psychology these are all ft journals rajdeep prewal editor in chief journal of marketing research i have huge list and i can spend a lot of time on this why i am showing this to you these are all indian origin people when we indians have this capability that we can head the top journals of this world cannot be published in them obviously we can publish in them it is just that we have to be little careful in what we are doing how we are submitting and what uh, we should be taking care of right 
so with this i think we should be inspiring uh, the creative research and with this i think i can uh, close uh, this and i would be happy if i will be uh, uh, fortunate enough to uh, take any questions from you so over to organizers please i am done with my talk i know that i have taken a little bit extra time apologies from my side over to you please uh thank you dr ajay for the wonderful discussion i hope your deliberation is going to help our budding researchers so with your permission sir may i take few questions as we are running out of time please please i would i would request god to make me capable of answering those questions please take those uh so uh are few of the participants naming hamia khan dr mandeep sharma dr sandeep panchal they want to ask that how to uh, know that whether the journal is predatory or the real one and uh, as the most of the journals they claim uh, themselves to be uh, in ugc care list and scopus listed as well and is it relevant to publish in a journal who charges for publication uh thank you dr bharti for asking uh, and for forwarding this question now actually this is not one question it is a layered question it has two three questions in it uh the first uh, uh question here is how do we identify which are predatory journals i have spent some time on it how to identify predatory journals uh, uh the only uh, way of identifying a predatory journal is to look at the history uh, uh of the journal and to know uh, since how long they are being published to go see if, if even if you will talk of ugc list when ugc started making this list they have nine pointers uh a journal should be catering to those nine points only then it would be included into the ugc list and thus uh, this uh, nine points were uh, that a journal should be in the publishing business from last nine years if they are not it will be included it should have the code of ethics very widely available on to their website if it is not it will not be published but to cut the long story short predatory journals identification is very easy a they would not be from the prestigious journal prestigious publishers b is they would not be listed in any of the prestigious databases c is they would not be having a uh, impact factor from plerivet analytics and this is what i have all discussed right so look at those journals don't publish in them Two is uh, uh, the Scopus list. The second part of the question is Scopus list. Uh, UGC list uh, is actually having uh, UGC now is not maintaining any list anymore. At least for the A category journal, the category A. Uh, the category A they have just written that anything which is into the Scopus, uh, we would consider as as A category journals. But let me tell you, Scopus also has some very uh, Uh, very light journals uh, if you want to start your career you start from uh, you start from the scopus list and then you can go to the web of science uh, web of science is more stringent in its criteria of inclusion the journal just to give you perspective that uh, scopus has almost double journals listed in marketing domain in comparison to web of science so that means uh, that means that web of science is more kind of you know uh stringent in its criteria so predatory journal identification follow those five points scopus list uh ugc list uh, you can look at the scopus but uh, scopus uh, if you really want to go 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 to web of science go to ssci papers uh, i think uh, this is uh, this is how you can actually identify uh, these points so if i have left any of your uh, points in your questions you can please let me know uh all done i think I so uh another questions asked from a topic ms and professor rajendra that what should be the structure of a review article although i know there will be a complete mm. deliberation and session on this yes yes okay see uh, uh, dr rajendra uh, review article is a science in that matter writing review article is not very easy uh, but i am not saying it cannot be done uh, you say what is the structure uh, see you have eight type of review articles available eight type of review articles including meta analytical review articles plain vanilla review articles systematic literature review articles 
bibliometric analysis articles theme based review articles so uh, when you are asking this question that uh, uh, what is the structure of a review article the structure basically depends upon what type of review article you are writing so suppose if you are writing a systematic uh, review article the structure would be a little different than the article which would be a meta analytical uh, review right so uh, the, the, the journals who are publishing uh, only uh, review article there are journals there is one journal international journal of management reviews it is having impact factor more than 7 and this is not a bogus impact factor you uh, must go to this journal and you must read some papers which are freely available for this journal to come to know what pattern uh, the, the the review articles are following uh, as far as the publications is, is concerned but uh, the bottom line is Uh, the the type of review article you writing the structure would change accordingly just very quick thing on to this suppose you are writing a systematic uh, literature review article systematic literature review article would mean that systematically you have reviewed the literature and out of that you found the three themes and you have actually presented it now uh, to me uh, there is no one fixed watertight compartment format for writing a review article now for example till now i have published two review articles uh in jbr and spanish journal of marketing the 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 formatting of both these articles are different right so it is not see elsewhere in one elsewhere is one of those publishers who uh, writes onto their journal's website your article your way so that means you write article your way unless it is making and that is what we were saying that creativity is the most important thing so there is no structure uh, there is no watertight compartment when you say this is the structure but uh, definitely there is uh, there there can be some frames which can be made for the different type of uh, different type of review articles so you can go to those eight type of review articles uh, you can ask uh, ig is doing wonderful job to talk on to the eight type of review articles and there we can discuss at length what would be the uh, formatting things on uh, the review articles thank you so much thank you dr rajendra sir one last question that uh, uh, prachi agrawal has asked that if not much literature is available on any topic then how to go about it uh thanks so thanks to prachi agrawal for asking this question uh because uh, see it is uh, something which would fall into the overlooking of facts when we say that nothing is available in literature uh literature is very vast things are available but what happens is when you are bringing out on trying to touch upon to a topic which is very new uh and hence less literature is available then you imagine about that gentleman who would have written the first article about this topic the the absolute answer of this question would be to read the first article written about any new concept for example brand equity given by kevin and keller in 1993 you read that article brand equity was not there before that customer base brand equity was not there before that does it mean that he has nothing to cite no whenever a new thing is coming up the related literature is always available you pick up that related literature and you say that this actually can be extended into bringing up a new concept and that is how you come up with this now for example we are into management discipline i am into management discipline management is a broad discipline it is not an core discipline commerce is a core discipline economics is a core discipline mathematics is a core discipline management is not a core discipline we are a broad discipline so which means uh, we have borrowed whatever we need from the core subjects for example economics theories we have brought commerce things we have brought commerce trade practices we have brought operations management uh, lpp models we have brought because they are of use to us so similarly uh you can actually go to uh you can actually uh you can actually go to these things you know uh and when you are getting up to this borrowed disciplines and bring up a new thing this is absolutely what you do when you're writing about a new topic you look at why you are trying to publish on to the new thing there would be some related things available and then you can kind of in publish it one more thing let me add on to this which is kind of a entertaining uh way of learning uh, of writing articles uh, you should go back close your doors and watch any good documentary of discovery channel or ngc national geographic channel you look at how they are starting it up this is no less than a research article 
suppose they are speaking on space science so they would first start from space and then they would keep on talking then they would have the interviews done from some experts interviews would say something these interviews are citations in our papers and then they would it is not that they would disconnect the dots you see the one hour 40 minutes documentary when they have you would feel you are watching a movie and movies first thing is that it is around one story only right so they are not moving out of that if you can understand that thing i think that is an entertaining uh, and a casual way of looking at how to write articles so one thing if i can tell the participants because we were little uh, you know tight into time so if still there are some questions which uh, you would like to discuss with me you can drop me a mail uh, ajaycuh@gmail.com this is where you can write and you can also go to my website uh, there also i have given my credentials and you can get that through so thank you very much igu for giving uh, this opportunity to talk to the audience you have been a wonderful audience thank you so much <laughs>